Welcome to the world of bacteria. That's what this chapter is going to be about. So this is going to be talking about prokaryotes. And we're going to be talking about prokaryotes in the realm of bacteria and also archaea bacteria. So prokaryotes are very small, as you know, um, very, very numerous. They're everywhere. They're covering you. They're inside you, that, which is a good thing. Don't worry. Um, so about 5,000 species of them have been identified, but it's estimated that there could be up to 4 million species out there. So there's tons and tons of species still waiting to be discovered. Now, people freak out about bacteria, which is the opposite of me. I love bacteria. I think it's great. I think we don't get enough of bacteria, actually. And if you look at this last sentence here, most bacteria are benign or beneficial, meaning that most of them are not going to do help or harm you, and a lot of them are actually going to help you. They're linking a ton of different things now, um, health issues, to the fact that we are too clean and we don't have enough bacteria. So I'm going to be that terrible mother that's going to be, you know, like making my child play in the mud and saying, like, make sure you get that bacteria. So I'm a little bit crazy in that way. Um, okay, so we've already touched on this, the whole bacteria and archaea bacteria being very different from one another. Um, they used to be in the same kingdom, but when molecular studies were done on them and looked at their DNA, it was like, you know, these are so different, they should be in their separate kingdoms. So they're in separate domains, they're in separate kingdoms, um, but they are both prokaryotes. Um, so the archaea bacteria we'll talk about at the end, but you should know that they do live in extreme environments. They like to live in extreme um, ice, you know, um, heat, um, salty, acidic, basic conditions, that type of thing. Um, okay, so let's talk about their actual form. So there are going to be three shapes that the um, bacteria can have, and I've got a picture of it right here. So you can have the coccus, which is going to be the spherical. You can have bacillus, which is that rod shaped, looks like little hot dogs or little tic tacs. And then you can have the spirillum, which has that spiral shape to it. So those are going to be the three characteristic shapes that they can have. Now, the spirillum, the last one I showed you, they can actually kind of swim and they use, usually hang out by themselves, whereas the bacillus and the coccus can form colonies. Um, some of them can form spores to um, send their genomes elsewhere, they can kind of do that and um, that's how they're going to work. Now, as far as telling the difference between prokaryotes and eukaryotes, there are a lot of differences, right? So don't forget, eukaryotes are going to be the cells that we have, prokaryotes are bacterial cells. So one of them is that um, prokaryotes are all going to be unicellular. So even if they form a colony, they all are their own distinct organism. Whereas with us, it's not like I could take one of my skin cells and be like, that's the fluorescent <coughs> organism. Hey, come here. Um, so that's going to be something that's a difference between them. The next difference is going to be their size. So as you know, bacterial cells are going to be way smaller than um, eukaryotic cells. They're going to be about 10 times smaller than eukaryotic cells. Then we can talk about their chromosomes. Prokaryotes are going to have circular DNA, whereas eukaryotes, ours is going to be arranged in linear fashion, like a line, right? Um, then there's another difference, Maggie. Sorry, <laughs> um, the way that they divide. So, and actually, these guys are just really interested in bacteria right now. Um, they can actually divide through binary fission, which you learned about in Bio 111, whereas eukaryotes are going to use mitosis, okay? Um, another big difference is that prokaryotes are going to have no organelles, whereas eukaryotes are. Um, a flagella, they can both have a flagella, but prokaryotes are going to have theirs rotate like a propeller to move and eukaryotes are going to be a little more complex where they can whip back and forth and then as you'll see in a little bit metabolic diversity so prokaryotes have way more ways of getting their carbon sources and getting energy than we do so that's another difference between the two types of cells so in the next video we'll get into the actual structure of prokaryotes and how that um, is set up